Seriously, three injector pumps, eight injectors, a starter motor, two weeks. Seriously, nightmare. Two thousand and eight Mondeo, and unfortunately, I've struck gold again. And it's never—it's normally a good thing striking gold, but not in this case. Pump injectors, everything destroyed. Always, always check when you do diesel filters for this because you don't want to see it. Look how bad it is. Just look what's coming out of the filter as well. Look at it all. Right, so we're back at this Mondeo. It's uh, 272,000 miles, uh, two litre diesel. And as you can see from the previous part, we found gold, which is never a good thing to find it in your fuel system. There's, this car has been very, very, very well maintained. And it's obviously got a bad fill of diesel because it was only serviced 3,000 miles ago by me and there was no metal um, gold parts in the filter system. So within 3,000 miles this has happened. And I'm hopefully now going to try oh, got the key in the ignition, and get it to hopefully try and get it to do to show you the pump go down when i was test driving i wasn't filming and the pump just dropped out completely um so we are getting a second hand pump and second hand injectors because there's no point going new for this vehicle it's just way too expensive it's expensive getting them second hand never mind getting them reconditioned so that's what we're going to do the customer knows that you know that potentially does have an issue doing it that way um let me get all the data pids up and let me see if i can get this to go now when i did this first we was getting absolutely no error codes now we are getting fuel pressure error codes and i know the reason why once you see them gold parts in the filter system there it's pointless going any further i know it's the pump and once them bits go through you have to take out the tank and clean out the tank you have to even though the injectors are still technically good all them bits would have gone through the injectors blocking them up and just you just have to replace everything there's no if buts or maybes about it if you just replace one thing like the injectors or just a pump and you don't clean out the tank you're going to be back in this situation very very quickly so let's get to some live data Right, I don't know if this will actually start now because I know they've been driving it and I think it said it went into limp mode, but let's just see if it will start. Right, it's struggling. Let's grab this. See, look at that. Look at that, perfect. It was up and then down. That should be straight up, absolutely straight up and just a nice line across. You can see already the fact that it's doing that is it's just it's just not right um i'm not going to take this for a spin because i know if i do i'm going to get caught on the road see look i tried to rev it up there we go perfect absolutely perfect try to rev it up let's get it all in one shot hopefully can you see that try to rev it up look just drop straight down and it's struggling there we go it will not take the shoe there we go absolutely perfect so i can just say now look i know it's the pump because of all them gold bits that i found and it should be just a nice smooth line none of this um jiggling about up and down she baggered she baggered oh it's gone up now i've taken off the engine cover and i've taken off the battery cover here because it was already basically off not that you need to take that off i'm gonna take the airbox out next because here's the high pressure pump on this we're lucky the high pressure pump is bolted on the side at least it's not part of the timing belt and the injectors are obviously just there so it's actually it could be a lot worse let me just remove this just so i can got a lot more room to get to the high pressure pump it's simple to move one juvie clip 
three little push buttons so in other words they just push down into these little rubber grommets here just lift them up with your hand and then the whole airbox comes out right you need a spanner to get to this one because when i put it back i'm going to put the juby clip head this side so you can get to it with easy enough with a uh, screwdriver but at the minute i'm just using a spanner to get to it all i'm going to do now is take all the connections off so i've taken off this unfortunately i want to get this out of the way but it's it's a lot more awkward it's only one bolt under there i'll struggle taking out that one bolt than you know spending too much time taking off this take off this clip very simple see there's two little ears here just pull out the ears and this clip will slide out undo that and then we've got another clip push them two little tabs in them two little ears in that will come out and then it's three bolts you can see one two and the third one's going to be down there i'm not going to be able to see it and uh, that's it a 13 and a 17 mil spanner because you have to hold the actual stub that's sticking out before you can take off this because otherwise you'll just break everything so you can see in there there's two little cutouts there and there where these little ears fit now this fits onto the pump this way um sorry that way like that and them little ears turn which turn the pump so you want to make sure when you put the new one in there's no damage there and also you want to make sure you put this in because otherwise the pump well the, the pump won't be spinning at all um and i can see from this one there's absolutely no damage there which is good but we know the pump's damaged one more connection off there three 13 mils um this bottom one is a lot harder to get to there's a 10 mil bolt just there which allows you to move this a little bit more out of the way um and then yeah you can see the seal and everything that's on there and uh yeah that's off right we got one injector out and the little washer didn't come with it now <clears throat> i will show this i will show you how to take an injector out but I just want to show you this tool. This tool is awesome when the washer isn't damaged. If the washer's damaged, they don't particularly work. But when they don't, look at that crap I've just pulled out of there. Look at that. So I'll show you how to use that. And I'll just show you the tip of the injector. Now, you see all the little metal filings on that. Um, this injector is just completely blocked um, and possibly damaged. That's why we're replacing four injectors. All second hand with the pump. Um, they're fairly easy to get out as long as they're not jammed in or seized in. This is done 230 odd thousand miles and it wasn't seized in at all. So that's good. I'll show you how to take them out now. This little rubber protector here, and it's very easy. Just get that in underneath, lift it out. That allows us to see the pipe 17 mil spanner the return is just there we'll get the return out in a second that's what the clip looks like for the return pipes and then we got two seven mil allen keys for the actual um injector and these are the little caps for them the studs stay in the hole as you can see like that so oh we also have to take off the clips so let me just loosen all that and i'll show you what happens then what we want to see so i've just loosened these caps off they just come off now i've taken off the 17 mil feed pipe i've taken off the connector and hopefully now yeah if you can see that there's a bit of movement in here see that that's a good sign because that means most probably it's not seized or if it is seized it's not really really bad so all i'm going to do just off camera is i'm just going to keep twisting it and at the same time see if i can do it on camera i might not be able to you can hear that now it's lifting up slightly so i'm just going to keep twisting and lifting and i should be able to get that up fairly easy right with a bit of twisting and lifting i've managed to get this up but what's stopping me now is the return pipe now be very careful if you don't lose this clip I'll try and do it on camera, but I don't know if I can. Just want to get the screwdriver in and off. There we go. Now, should hope we'll be able to take that clip out now. There we go, hold that. And now we have to be very careful and try and lever this out very, very carefully. There we go. 
There we go, just like that. Now, again, oh, the uh, the washer hasn't come out with it, but again, it's not a big deal. See the washer down there. So I'll try and do it in one camera motion. So I put that down there, twist it in. Oh, we had it up. I just dropped it. Did I drop it down? I did. I dropped it back down. But you saw how easy that was. Typical. It's gone back down flat now, so that's okay. So we just do a little bit of a love tap. Nope. <laughs> you saw how easy it came out. I'll just do this off camera and uh, I'll get it off. All right, and there we go. Now I do have a special machine to take them out when they're seized. I got it from Hubby Tools. I have done other videos on that. But there we go, it's out now. And the seats are good, but these washers were never gone anyway, so there's gonna be no damage to the seats or anything like that. Um, just take out these other two off camera and wait for the new bits tomorrow. Right, I have the old one and the new one, and unfortunately, I can see damage on the bottom. Where is it? Uh, where are we looking? Oh, just here. So I have to swap that over. Not a big deal, but you know, frustrating. So we're just gonna swap that over. This is the good one. And I suppose technically it would still work because the pins are there. Um, but I'm just gonna swap it over from that one because it has, well, even that one's damaged. Um, but at least it has the full thing on it. And I've got to then take all this off because they've cut all that and stuff. So let me get that ready for putting in. Clocked everything over on the pump. I'm going to leave as much stuff on as I can to keep it kind of sealed. I'm using the one that came off it as well because this little ear, as you can see, doesn't really look worn. Where this one, you can see, look, the marks that it's hit here and here because it's a lot older. So this pump is definitely hasn't done as many mileage. Doesn't particularly mean anything, but it hasn't done as much mileage. So I'm going to clean all this. I obviously cleaned that with brake clean and everything before I put it on. So I'm just going to stick this back in now. Three bolts. Can't really film it because it's just awkward. But I'm going to clean this first and just twist this to whichever point it needs. Like I said, there's no timing on this. You just shove it in and it sorts itself out. Um, we just need to line it up first with these ears and the two ears that are on the engine. Right, this is how all the injectors have come. They've all got a sealer to hold the clip in which believe me these are some of the best clips and even the, the tightest fittings they're not going to come out um uh what else some of them have even had this sealed so they've been out before uh everything's just been cut off but that's typical scrapyard shame also they've broken these because these are really handy to keep for other things um, but they're all broke. Now, do bear in mind, this is 2008, and in this year, as far as I remember, Siemens, which these are Siemens injectors and Siemens pump, got brought out. So they changed the name to Continental. So if you see Continental ones for 2008, they are exactly the same. There was just a changeover in this particular year where they went from Siemens to Continental, but they're the exact same injectors, exactly the same pump. So if you've got semen injectors in your car and you get Continentals in the same year, they'll fit, there won't be any issues. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. If you see Continental, you're like, oh, they're wrong and I don't want to fit them, where they're actually fine. So I fitted two, which has got two more to fit and I'll show you how I fit them. They're very simple. Uh, obviously new, new washers, new all that stuff. And clean the injector seat, recut it if you have to. I've shown videos on how to do that. So I'm not going to go through it on this one. And uh, yes, yeah, so let me get this one ready, all the gunk off, take all the crap off that they've cut, clean it up a little bit, and then I'll get ready to install it. Right, I've just realized something. I know why they put this sealer here, because they haven't pushed the clips all the way through. That's just halfway on. Um, I didn't particularly take too much notice on the other ones, unfortunately. Can I take this sealer off on camera now? Let me take this sealer off and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so whoever was doing this really didn't know what they were doing, because look, ready? 
Oh, the seal is on it. That pushes in flat. Goes all the way to the edge, but of course the seal is still on it. Now I can't get it in on camera, but you can see the big gap. And look at the ones that I've put in. Absolutely no gap whatsoever. So yeah, I need to do a bit more clean on this, but that's why they put the sealer in, because they didn't push them in all the way. Unbelievable. All right, I've also just seen that broken connector, but it's not really gonna affect anything. Now this is how you put them in. So you put the clip halfway in first, put the injector down, put the return pipe on, and then clip the return pipe home. You'll hear a good click. And then look, push that all the way in, which completely locks it. They had that halfway out, which is why obviously it kept coming out and leaking, so they decided to put sealer on it. They just didn't know <laughs> to push it all the way home. Unbelievable. But anyway, so let me get all this set up and I'll show you how to put it in the actual car now. Right, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. As you can see, the injector isn't fully all the way down. So now the clip is halfway in, as you can clearly see. So, oh, you are joking me. Why is it whenever I turn the camera on, this happens? The others, no problem whatsoever. Let me get that clip back out. Right, I just didn't have it pushed in all the way. It was a little bit loose. Now it's pushed in that halfway. Now what we're gonna do is push this in. This will go past the clip. Now it is quite hard. Let me just, oh, I need two hands for this. Let me just get that pushed in just off camera and then I'll show you. Right, I've got it in. Now I didn't have these, uh, the actual, um, retainer onto the studs so I just line that back up and that sat down push that in now what I've got to do is push this in with my finger not necessarily your finger you can do it with a screwdriver I might have to do it with a screwdriver um, push that in oh can you see trying to do this on camera is a nightmare now so that's all the way in. Oh, and of course that had to fall down again, didn't it? I tell you, my day, I've been dropping every single fucking bolt. Do anything off camera, it flies. As soon as I turn the camera on, just all this crap. Just lightly put that on there. Now what I've got to do is screw down the two retaining nuts. Um, seven mil Allen keys put the clip on and that's done. Right, as you can see, it's all in now. Can anyone tell me what these are actually designed for? You might not realize, but it's actually very simple what they're actually designed for. There's some evidence on them that might give it away. Another thing I've just noticed is I know these injectors have come out two different cars and I can tell because of this injector here. Now, can any eagle eye viewer tell me how can I tell that these injectors have come out of two different cars? So answers down below in the comments, how I know this has come off a different car to these other three injectors. You can pause the video, but it's staring you in the face. Right, you can see the point of cleaning now, cleaning everything properly. The first part of the video is when I actually diagnosed the issue and I put a brand new filter in this and I cleaned it and the car is literally done maybe 20 miles before it's completely and utterly gone. Um, and that's how much more is come into it with a brand new filter and fully cleaned housing. This is why you have to take the tank down, clean it all, clean all your lines, clean absolutely everything. Because otherwise, all this crap is just gonna go straight back in and cause you even more problems than before. Have you ever seen such a clean diesel filter to be replaced? But yeah, just always best replace everything. Clean everything and replace everything. Before anyone says yes, I realize my screen is very, very dirty. Right, fuel metering valve. Switch on ignition. Oh, error. Why have we got an error? Why do we have an error? Let me see what's going on. This job has turned into an absolute nightmare. It is now absolutely pissing it down. It's nearly two weeks later 
than I when I originally started this job. We are on our third pump. <sighs> nightmare. Absolute nightmare. I'm going to fit this and fingers crossed this one actually works. Right, this is the old pump I put in. And as you can see, I really, I can't turn that. This is the original one that came out. I can turn that. It's a bit hard, but I can turn it. This one, I just can't turn it. Um, it's not seized, I can put something on it and turn it, but I just can't turn it with my fingers. This is the new one, and yeah, so much easier to turn, and it's even splurting out a bit of fuel. It's a good sign. Yes, yes, fucking yes! Oh, you seriously don't believe how happy I am to get this fucking thing started. Oh, unbelievable. Woo. Put the new pump in. I used my special trick with using the tyre, um, the lorry tyre valve extender to put it on this Schrader valve. Because what happens is if you take, if you press down the Schrader valve, all the pressure comes down. So I put that on, pumped with my hand pump. Loads of air obviously came up. Tried to start it, it wasn't starting. It took about 30 seconds, 20 seconds to start. I thought I was having other issues. But yes, I am freezing. I am soaking wet. But I got the fucking thing started. Oh my god. Right, let me turn off the heater because I'm absolutely soaked. We'll turn off the car. Just show you how easy it starts. Boom! What I'm going to do now is I'm going to learn the pump and do all that, do all the stuff I need to do for the pump and the injectors and stuff. And we can then take it for a drive. Oh, I know what you're thinking. LG, uh, RGB keyboard. Leon, isn't that a bit overkill, using a 4K gaming laptop to uh, learn the pump and stuff? And I would say to you, um, well, no. No, it isn't, because it looks cool. Now, I've shown on another part of this video, I'm sure I have, how to do this. So I'm not going to go through it all again. I'm just going to reset everything and learn everything and do what I need to do. And then I can take the car for a drive. Right, I actually thought I already did this. But unfortunately, you can see from the other part of the video, I was using my Snap-on machine. And my lead went, the lead got broken. And that's why it wouldn't communicate. And because it's been such a long time from the beginning of the video to the end, I thought I showed it in the video how to learn the pump. I didn't, but I'll do it for another video. Looky, 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 look what it is. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah. I've changed my laptop again, because it was just a little bit tongue in cheek. But anyway, um, so this is the top line, this is the pump. You see how it instantly it goes up. If you remember before at the beginning of the video, how it jagged going up and kind of down. When I rev it up, remember what it was doing before, and look at this, instantly instantly going up and I'm and that's me letting it off by the way um, you can see she good she good right like everything the proof is in the pudding all the data is good but the drive tells you everything yeah we've got nice power go through all the gears so no, we haven't got an issue. I'll stick it into six gear. I'll slow down a little bit. And I'm gonna put my foot down so it's gonna be on the full load. Bit of turbo lag, so it's really gonna be on the full load. There we go. It's gonna absolutely put everything under a lot of pressure. If anything's gonna go, there we go. We're absolutely sorted. It is all good. Close the window to stop the old wind noise. But there we go, it is driving lovely, power's nice, no rattles, no bangs, no nothing. Just a nightmare for second-hand parts, it's just, oh, you know, and it's, I told the customer, but, you know, they were getting angry because obviously it was taking a long time, and it's just, it's a nightmare for everyone concerned. I know in America, 
um, you can get money from the scrapyard or from the parts people and you can actually get paid. I am not going to get paid for any of this in the sense of all the extra days that I've worked. I'm not going to get anything for it and I can't claim for it. In America you can, which I think is a great system, but over here it just doesn't work that way. So, you know, and I'm working in the rain, getting absolutely soaked. I wouldn't be doing this for the hell of it. And some customers, I'm not saying this customer is saying this, but some customers don't understand that. They think you're doing it on purpose. It has been absolutely beautiful the last week, the weather. The only day I've got all the parts is pissing it down. Like, I'm not going to be doing this on purpose. And customers need to realise this. But anyway, it is all done. It's absolutely perfect. I completely forgot to say as well, when I originally did this job, I just told the customer it needed injectors and a pump. And we went down the second-hand route because of the age of the car, because of money, because of the real world. But what also happened in the meantime of all this two weeks going on to try and do this job, um, the start motor died. The start motor was dodgy. I thought I'd be able to get away with it um, because once the car is running, the start motor would have been okay for a few more months, possibility. But it wouldn't. If, if the car started within three or four seconds, which when it's dry, when it's starting properly the start motor is no problem but after three or four seconds the start motor was struggling um so yeah the start motor even died so that was another expense and just oh this has just turned out to be an absolute nightmare but it's now done the customer is going to be happy i can finally do the other jobs that this has been delaying me uh, yeah, just a nightmare, people. Nightmare. 